The Defense Commissary Agency took control of Armed Forces Commissaries worldwide 25 years ago, on October 1, 1991. The commissary benefit wasn't new, but it was the first time in history that all military commissaries were managed by one agency. Since 1867, the commissary benefit has enabled Armed Forces personnel of all ranks to purchase food and household goods at a substantial savings compared with civilian prices. For years, each installation ran its own store with minimal guidance from the service headquarters. After World War II, each service took a more active role in guiding commissary operations. By the mid-1970s, each of the armed services had officers or agencies that were specifically dedicated to running retail commissaries. AVCOMS, the Air Force Commissary Service, Navresso, the Navy Resale Services Support Office, TSA, the U.S. Army Troop Support Agency, and the Marine Corps Commissary Office. As the Cold War ended, Congress began to anticipate the reduction of the armed forces and their budgets. Bases no longer needed would close, as would their stores. Commissaries were already frequent targets for elected officials unfamiliar with the benefit's value or with its importance to military families and retirees. Members of Congress wishing to protect the benefit thought it would be easier and cheaper if all four services combined their operations under one roof, a purple agency with one budget to run all military commissaries. In 1989, Congress formed a commission led by Army Major General Donald P. Jones to conduct a study on the viability of such a system. The Jones Study, as it was called, prompted Congress to merge the headquarters and region structures of the four systems into one. This would give the commissaries a head start if their opponents demanded the stores save more money. At first, each service feared the merger would cause them to lose control over their benefit, that one service or another might influence the agency to the detriment of the others. Those fears proved to be false. The new Purple Agency was impartial to the services thanks to the director, Army Major General John P. Dreska, and a transition team of specialists from the service's commissary organizations. The agency gained the service's support. Subsequent directors continued that commitment, helping DECA stay viable and continue the benefit. Since then, eight directors or interim directors have dealt with base closures, efforts to combine commissaries and exchanges, making commissaries into non-appropriated fund activities, or to contract out commissary operations. A quarter of a century later, we are proud of our agency's accomplishments. Much of what we did in 1991 has been improved as we've adopted new and emerging technologies and methods. For 25 years, we have made adjustments as needed to keep providing the benefit, even as stores close due to base realignment and closure actions. Originally numbering 411 sales stores, plus another 17 grocery sections inside exchanges, there are now 238. But our newest stores are state of the art, and our older stores have received multiple upgrades. Average customer savings increased as much as 10% in some locations. Industry supported us with great deals and prices, and we've developed new ways of doing business and reaching our customers, like the click-to-go service and the special on-site sales for customers who do not live near a commissary. The history of the agency has been one of adjusting to change. We don't fear new things or an uncertain future because all things now old and familiar to us were once new and untried. We've overcome many challenges and will do it again. Whatever the future holds, DECA will continue to provide the benefit, as it always has. Defense Commissary Agency, happy 25th birthday. Here's to 25 more. I'm Pete Skirbunt, DECA historian.